can see God in the great day. Learn the law, obey the law, apply and have faith. Learn the law, obey the law, apply and have faith. Learn the law, obey the law, apply and have faith. So you can see God in the great day. I'm alive like Johnny Five. Learning God's way, boy, it got me high. The truth hit me like a freight train. It disembarked the old man. I got a new brain. Call me Richie Bento from Harlem Nights. I seen the Lord's lights. Tell I ain't coming home. They say, watch me do my dugging. I say, watch me obey. See how the Lord love me? Christians trying to save souls with no Bible. Guess they never heard Romans 3 and 4 before. Got the whole loaf and ate it all. Mouth full of honey. It's so sweet, y'all. Shabbat Shalom, Yasharala. Shabbat Shalom. This your Ak Kadash Alahayim coming at you with another quick lesson. First and foremost, I like to say Ka Hala Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Barakata. Yahweh being the name of our Heavenly Father, the Ancient of Days, the Lord of Hosts, the Almighty, and Yahweh Shai being the name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And today's Sabbath class, I'm going to be going into the New Year rebuke, right? Rebuking this pagan practice called New Year, right? Beware that any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, right? Pointless lies is what the world is buying into, right? Our people have made lies their refuge man and what is the lie right what is the lie the lie is that the new year starts in the dead of the winter that is the lie man that our people honestly believe why do our people believe that the new year starts in the dead of the winter because satan has thought to change the times and the laws, right? Our people believe that the new year starts in the dead of the winter because of the root, because of the rudiments of the world, man. The fundamental things that they learned in elementary school, middle school, high school, you know, the rudiments of the world has taught them that the new year starts in the dead of the winter. The education, the educational system which is a part of the B system, indoctrinates the minds of you uh, so-called blacks, Latinos, Native and Seminole Indians to believe that the new year starts in the dead of the winter. The educational system lets you out of school in December, right before a pagan, uh, wicked Saturnalia or Christmas, they let you out of school and you don't come back until after the new year and that's the doctrine that they kick to you while you in school so you automatically believe it your parents automatically believe that lie your great grandparents your grandparents every, all of them follow the customs that we were taught in these educational systems and now when you get older you're gonna pass it on to your children you know most high forbid you know what i'm saying because the new year actually starts in the springtime, man. When when life is, is springing forth, when, when when everything is blooming and blossoming, that's when new year start. Right? Let's go to the book of Ezekiel uh Salaki. Let's go to the book of Exodus, the twelfth chapter. And we'll start at the first verse. So we can get the understanding of when our new year actually starts it's not a crime to not celebrate christmas it's not a crime to not celebrate new year man but our people will look at you like you're actually murdering somebody when you don't keep these pagan practices man so let's go to exodus the 12th chapter in the first verse and it reads 
And the Lord Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Right? So the month of Abib is what the Heavenly Father is referring to. And Abib is the first month of the ancient Hebrew calendar. Right? Abib is in the spring when life is being brought forth. Right. He said this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year unto you. He didn't say uh, the month of Tibet will be the first month of the year unto you because Tibet is what month we're in right now. We're in the 10th month of the Hebrew calendar. Right. And when you look at that word December, deck means 10. Right. So December, in actuality, when you go to the etymology of words, is actually the 10th month. And we're in the 10th month right now. And in the Hebrew calendar, the 10th month is known as the month of Tibet. He didn't say that the month of Tibet will be the first month or the beginning of months in a new year unto us. He didn't say that. He said uh, the month of a bill. Right. Just to just to verify. Right. Let's go to the the book of Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter and the first verse. Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter in the first verse. And it reads, observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Right. So the month of a is the beginning of months. Right. It, it is the first month of the year to you. Right. Because the month of a is the same exact month that the heavenly heavenly father brought us out of slavery, man. Out of Egypt. Right. The, these other gods didn't bring us out of slavery. These other gods didn't proclaim the beginning of months to us or 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 our new year unto us the heavenly father did man and just by you partaking in a pagan practice of new year you're giving honor and glory to another god that don't even exist right so the so-called new year is a pagan practice and pagan means heathen it's a heathen practice it's a heathen custom that's not our custom it's not our heritage to celebrate New Year in the dead of the winter, man. Janus is a deity of Roman mythology, the son of Apollo. According to some versions, Janus was born in Thessalian region in Greece, but left for the region of Lazio, located in current Italy. There, he was welcomed by the mythical king Camesse, with whom he divided the power. Janus edified several cities, and, according to some Roman myths, Janus welcomed the god Saturn, after his banishment from Greece by the hands of Jupiter. Saturn would be the equivalent of the titan Cronus of Greek mythology, and, as a form of gratitude for being welcomed, the old god began the golden era of mankind. During this period, men started to live in a world of extreme happiness and abundance. Cronus also blessed Janus, giving him the power to know the past and the future. Janus was the deity accountable for teaching men how to use boats, and also introduced them to coins. After the end of his life among the men, Janus became a deity. As a god, he would be the deity responsible for protecting doors and gates. This god was depicted with two faces and had a key in his hands. When he opens a door, the god unleashes a new cycle, and this can be a new cycle of harvest, or the passage from childhood to adult life. He is also associated with the beginning and the end of wars. During the war between the Romans and the Sabines, the god stopped the Sabines from attacking the Roman armies, creating a source of boiling water, preventing the advance of the Sabines. The Romans eventually repaid their protection by building several temples in his honor. The main one was closed during peaceful periods, and only in times of war people could find it open. Since he was a god connected to transitions and new cycles, 
the Romans baptized the name of the first month of the year in honor of the god Janus. With that, January is the time when people try to accomplish their New Year's resolution and start a new cycle of prosperity with the blessing of the god Janus. Right? Uh, the word January, who, whose god the new year is about, the god Janus, right? He is known as the two-faced god, right? He's the god of gates and doors. You know what I'm saying? See, the ancient Roman had specific gods who held the key so to speak to uh the metaphorical doors or gates between what was and what is to come right that's why the two-faced guy he's looking back into the past and he's looking uh toward the future he looking he looking back towards the past and he looking towards the future he's a two-faced god right um the people made promises to their gods at the start of each year that they will return borrow objects and pay their debts the Romans began each year by making promises to the god Janus for whom the month of January is named, right? So the Romans, you know, the, the Edomites, this is their custom. This is their heritage. This is what they made up in their mind. You know, um, the Heavenly Father said that these Edomites uh, sought, to taint, sought to change the times and the laws. And that's what they did to throw you off balance. Right. By you celebrating a new year in the dead of the winter in the dead of the winter is off balance. It goes against the, the time frame that the Heavenly Father set us up to be on, to be on one accord with him and his ways. It throws you off balance, man. Right. And a lot of our people are, are out of whack because they follow in the traditions of man and not the customs of the Heavenly Father that he left for us. Right, let's go to the book of Psalm, chapter 96, and I'm going to start at verse 1. Psalm, chapter 96, and verse 1, and it reads, O sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and is greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. So the heavenly father is greatly to be praised, man. And he is to be feared above all gods, right? There's over 10,000 gods on the earth right now that, that, our people worship, man, knowingly and unknowingly. You know what I'm saying? Our people worship over 10,000 gods in the land of Babylon to this very day. But it says the Lord, he is to be feared above all gods. Yahweh is the one true living power, right? It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power, man, because he controls your destiny, right? You should fear him. And you should be uh, you should be um, ready and willing to serve him with joy and gladness of heart, man, at all times, day by day. Verse five. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord Yahweh made the heavens. So the Greek God Janus, that's an idol. That's the God of these other nations, man. That's the God of the Edomites. Of the Romans, of the Greece, of the Grecians, right? All the same. The God of the Babylonians, the Americans, right? It's all the same thing. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord Yahweh made the heavens, man. Janus didn't make the heavens. Janus didn't give you law, statutes, and commandments, and judgments, and ordinances. Janus didn't give you high holy days or new moons. Or a new year or beginning of the uh, a beginning of months. He didn't give you the month of a bib, the beginning of months. You know what I'm saying? He didn't give you a new year. Right. These devils, these Satan worshipers who controls the government 
over here in America, they gave you these customs because they knew that it would go against your power, that it would go against your creator. Right. And our people don't want to forsake this world. When we say forsake this world. Right. We're saying forsake the traditions and the customs of this world. You still must be a, a law abiding citizen. Right. It's not against the law, the laws of Esau to not keep New Year's. It's not against the laws of Esau to not keep uh, Christmas. Right. Or Valentine's Day. You're not breaking no laws. But the way that you've been programmed and brainwashed in, in elementary school, middle school, high school, and the educational beast system, they'll make you think that you're breaking the damn law for not partaking in their, in their celebrations, man. Right? Verse 5 again. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heaven. Right? The Roman god, the Greek god Janus is an idol, man. You shouldn't be partaking in a fake ass New Year's, right? Our people don't know what the hell going on. They just worship whatever, man. Let's go to the book of John, the fourth chapter and the 22nd verse. The book of John, the fourth chapter and the 22nd verse. And it reads, ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews, right? So people out here in Babylon, even... Those of the other nations, right? People that's out here from damn China, from mm. East India, from uh, the Middle East, from Iran, Iraq, pa uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, right? You come over here to America and you start following the traditions of Satan. That's not even y'all custom, right? Y'all don't celebrate the new year in the dead of the winter. But because y'all following this beast, y'all begin to adapt. Or adopt these customs and then you go back home and try to put it on y'all people. And that's exactly what Satan wanted, man. You worship and know not what you worshiping, man. You just worshiping uh, Christmas. You don't even know the, etym uh, not the etymology, but the, the root cause analysis, right? Shout out to Yeshaya with the fire, right? The root cause analysis of these pagan practices, man. You don't know the, you don't know the origin stories of these pagan traditions, and you just out here worshiping them. Right? They never taught they never taught you in school why they celebrate uh New Year's in the dead of the winter. They never taught you that. You have to research for yourself. Right? It say ye worship and know not what, because our people don't know what the hell they worshiping. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews, right? We know what we worshiping because we read the Bible. And we apply the Bible. You learn the law, obey the law, apply and have faith, man. Learn the law, obey the law, apply and have faith. We know what we worship. We worship the Holy One of Israel. We follow his ways and his customs, despite how crazy we look to our families and to the rest of the world. We know what we worship. Salvation is of the Jews, man. Right? But our people go off into idolatry. Um, therefore, they're committing spiritual fornication or a spiritual adultery against the heavenly father, the creators of the heaven and the earth, man, the creator of the heavens and the earth. You're committing adultery against him because we're in a marriage with the heavenly father. Right. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. So like, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha. Let's go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the 14th chapter. You know, because you got to understand that just because you're not out here sleeping around physically, that doesn't mean you're not a fornicator. Just because you're not out here uh, sleeping with married women, that doesn't mean you're you're not an adulterer. You You could possibly be committing uh spiritual adultery against the heavenly father by worshiping other gods following pagan practices is adultery right worshiping idols is adultery man right so this wisdom of solomon the 14th chapter in the 12th verse and it reads for the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication 
and the invention of them, the corruption of life. So for the devising, meaning the creation of idols, just like we did when we was in the wilderness, when we got those earrings and Aaron made a golden calf, we created an idol. And that was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Because we had a heavenly father that we was worshiping and serving, but our people wanted a physical object to see and, and give all the glory and praise to that physical object and say that that golden calf is what delivered us out of Egypt. Blasphemy. Straight up fornication. That's that's equivalent to you going to sleep with somebody while you're in a marriage with the Heavenly Father. You're going to sleep with the devil, man. That's equivalent. Right? Verse 12 again. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication and the invention of them, the corruption of life. Right. So it's a corrupt thing when you forsake the laws of the Heavenly Father to do your own thing, because the Heavenly Father said in the, um, Exodus, the 20th chapter, thou shalt have no other gods before me. You should not make idols and bow down to them and worship them. R roughly paraphrasing, man. And that's exactly what we did. So that was the beginning of spiritual fornication, because you're giving your praise on and glory to, to a creation instead of the creator. Right. And Israel did this numerous of times, man. The most I forgave us and, and those he forgave was the one third. He didn't forgive the two thirds. Don't think just everybody was forgiven for, for committing adultery against the heavenly father. Only a specific remnant who actually repented and acknowledged their, their sins and confessed their sins and accepted their punishment and got better. Right. The other ones that didn't acknowledge their sins, that felt like they didn't have to, that felt like they could worship whatever they wanted to, that they didn't have to hearken to the heavenly father or his prophets or his priests. Hey, they was punished, man. And they still being punished to this very day. That's why you see some of our people out here walking on the streets with no knowledge of the heavenly father and you can't tell them shit. They living in hell, man. They living in hell, right? They are living in hell. You're living in hell when you don't have the knowledge of the most high. So two thirds of our people, yeah, they regenerate back on the earth, but without the knowledge of the heavenly father. And that's a scary thing, man, to live a, a whole entire life, live 50 years, 70 years on this earth without the knowledge of the most high. And then you die. That's no fun, man. <laughs> that's no fun. Right. So let's go to the book of Ezekiel, the 23rd chapter. And we'll start at the 35th verse so we can get into some more of this uh, spiritual fornication or adultery against the Heavenly Father, man. All right. The book of Ezekiel, the 23rd chapter in the 35th verse, and it reads, Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Yahweh, because thou hast forgotten me and cast me behind thy back, therefore, Bear thou also thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. Right? So the most high saying, like, since you forgot him, since you forgot the law, statutes, and commandments, you finna bear your lewdness and your whoredoms, man. Meaning he finna give you the desires of thine heart, even though it's wicked as hell. He finna turn you over to your own wickedness. Right? Verse 35. The Lord said, Moreover unto me, son of man. Wilt thou judge Aloha and Aloha Ba, right? Yea, declare unto them their abominations, right? So the Most High is about to get in some of the specific sins of Aloha, which is the Samar which is Samar Samaria, right? And a Haloba, a Haloba, which is Jerusalem, man, right? How do we know that Aloha is Samaria and Aloha Ba is Jerusalem? Let's go up to the let's go up to the first verse. Ezekiel chapter 23 and verse 1, right? We're just gonna jump up to the first verse, just so we can get an understanding of why he called Ahola Samaria and Ahola Ba Jerusalem. If I'm saying the names correctly, bear with me. All right? 
This is Ezekiel chapter 23 and verse 1, and it reads, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother, and they committed whoredoms in Egypt. They committed whoredoms in their youth. There were their breasts pressed, and there they bruised the, te the teats of their, of their virginity. Verse four, and the names of them were Ahaloha, Ahola, Salakia, and the names of them were Ahalo, Ahola, the elder, and Aholaba, her sister, and they were mine, and they bare sons and daughters. Thus were their names Samaria is Ahola, and Jerusalem is Aholaba. Right. So that's how we know that Ahola is Samaria and Jerusalem is Aholaba. Right. Because the Most High speaks in parables. He speaks in figures. Right. He speaks metaphorically to get his point across. Right. So that's how we know that uh, Ahola is Samaria and Jerusalem is Aholaba. Right. So let's jump down to verse. Let's read verse uh, 36 again, right? Because these two women or two daughters were committing whoredom in Egypt, right? Following the ways of the Egyptians, worshiping their many gods, worshiping Ra, uh, Ra uh, Osiris, uh, Newt, right? They was worshiping all these gods of Egypt, Jerusalem, as well as Samar Samaria, right? So uh, let's jump down to 36 again, verse 36, Ezekiel 23 and 36. It says, the Lord Yahweh said, moreover unto me, son of man, will thy judge Ahola and Ahaloba? Yea, declare unto them their abomination. So the heavenly father is telling Ezekiel to, hey, go prophesize against Jerusalem and Samaria. Right. Verse 37 that they have committed adultery and blood is in their hands, right? So Yahweh Shai is using, so like Yahweh is using the figure or the parable of sexual immortality to illustrate their idolatry, man. They committed, they committed uh, adultery, right? They committed adultery against the heavenly father by worshiping and celebrating these pagan practices and following these pagan gods or heathen gods. Verse 37 again, they have committed adultery and blood is in their hands and with their idols, they have committed adultery and have also caused their sons whom they bear unto me to pass them through the fire to devour them, right? So they also sacrifice their children to Molech, which is in modern days time, Planned Parenthood, right? And abortion pills. Meaning that they're burning their children alive when they sacrifice them to Molech. Molech. Meaning they, they pass them through the fire and devour them, man. The same thing that was going on in the ancient world is the same thing that's going on now. Even when you look at these fashion uh, industries being exposed, Balenciaga, hey, them, them, them devils, they worship Molech and Baal, man. Balenciaga means Baal is king. And, and they all about child sacrifice, man. The same thing that our people be on, the same thing that Samaria be on, right? When you when you grow accustomed to following these devils, you start doing devilish things, man. Right. Verse 38. Moreover, this they have done unto me. They have defiled my sanctuary in the same day and have profaned my Sabbath. Right. So right now, today, over here in Babylon, you have children of Israel women or daughters of the children of Israel getting abortions right now today on the Sabbath day, on the Shabbat, on the holiest day of the week, right? They are profaning the Sabbath of the heavenly father, right? They are profaning the, the Shabbat, the seventh day of rest of the heavenly father. You know, you also have men dropping these women off to go get these abortions. Giving them money so they can go get an abortion. The, the, the lady want the baby, but the man don't want the baby. So he gave her money and told her to go get an abortion. 
so his wife don't get mad at him, right? They are profaning his Sabbath. They are defiling his sanctuary in the same day, right? So we got to be mindful of what we worship in out here in Babylon, man. You got to you gotta unwash your brain from all the brainwashing. You got to unwash your brain and start from scratch with learning, man. Throw everything that you learned in the educational system in your households growing up, throw all that out the window and open up this Bible and relearn, right? Because idolatry is not going to allow you to get into the kingdom of heaven. Idolatry is going to keep you out of the kingdom of heaven. What is the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom of heaven is rulership, right? How would I say he'll give us power over the nations if we keep his commandments and keep the faith? You know what I'm saying? The kingdom of heaven is rulership over the whole earth, right? And by you committing idolatry, you would not receive rulership. You would not receive rulership, man. You will not you will not be able to you will not be able to rule over your sins if you partake in a New Year's in a New Year's celebration. Right? You will not be allowed to enter into the kingdom of heaven if you partake in, in Valentine's Day, man. And all these pagan customs. You will not be allowed to have rulership. Let's go to the book of Galatians, the fifth chapter, and the nineteenth verse. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19 and it reads now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these adultery right so the works of the flesh is adultery what the heavenly father said they have committed adultery right he said they have committed adultery because we're in a marriage with the heavenly father when you worship idols that is adultery. And that's works of the flesh. That's something physical that you want to worship. Just because the Heavenly Father is an invisible power, our people, they, they want to see something to worship. That's why celebrities are idolized in worship. Because they can see them. You can't see the Heavenly Father. Only through the Spirit you can see Him. By the works, the good deeds, the keeping of the commandments, the charity, the alms. The love, the compassion, right? That's that's how we see the Heavenly Father, through the Spirit. But they want to see something physical because of the works of the flesh, which are these, right? Adultery, fornication, spiritual fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, right? Verse 20, idolatry. Idolatry, celebrating New Year's, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween, uh, Valentine's Day, 4th of July. That's all idolatry. You would not have rulership if you're partaking in those customs, man. Verse 20, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings. Tonight is going to be a lot of envying. In the, in the 21st verse, it's going to be a lot of envying tonight. It's going to be a lot of murders tonight. It's going to be a lot of drunkenness tonight. And revelings, man. A lot of parties with orgies. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, a lot of clubs going to be turned up. Strip clubs. A lot of sex going to be going on in the clubs. Right? Verse 21 from the top. Envyings, murders, drunkenness revelings and such like of the which i tell you before as i have told you also in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of the heavenly father right so a lot of that's going down tonight a lot of lawless and wicked wicked behaviors are, are gonna go down tonight man you know what I'm saying? It's the Shabbat right now, but the Shabbat ends at sundown. And, and as soon as sundown get here, people people are going to be ready to go out and just be whores and whoremongers and, and lawless, biting citizens, according to the word.
lawless abiding citizens are finna be tearing up the streets of Babylon tonight. You know what I'm saying? I know out here in, in Las Vegas, you can't even get to the strip. You have to park a little distance and, and try to wiggle your way down there because it'd be so crowded, man. Full of folly and madness. You know what I'm saying? All these things that our people are doing right now for the celebration of the God of the of the Greek God or the Roman God Janus is everything that's going to keep you out the kingdom of heaven. And, you know, a majority of our people don't give a damn about rulership. They don't give a damn about the kingdom of heaven. So they're going to do what they want to do. Right. Even though you present them with this truth. Hey, it's like talking to a brick wall, man. You know what I'm saying? So be mindful. If you want to inherit the kingdom of heaven, if you want rulership, hey, don't go out celebrating no damn pig and New Year, man. New Year, not even. It's not even the real New Year. New Year don't even start in the dead of the winter. It starts in the spring, just like we went over earlier. Right. Let's go to the book of Judges, the 10th chapter and the 11th verse. The book of Judges, the 10th chapter and the 11th verse, and it reads, And the Lord Yahweh said unto the children of Israel, Did not I deliver you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites and from the children of Ammon and from the Philistines? So the Heavenly Father asking us, the children of Israel, did he not deliver us from the Egyptians? So did Yahweh deliver us from the Egyptians or did the Roman God Janus deliver us from the Egyptians? Right. It was the Heavenly Father who delivered us. That's who we should be praising, honoring, worshiping, reverencing. Right. We shouldn't be reverencing Janus, man. He didn't deliver us out of Egypt. Right. Verse 12. The Zidonians also and the Amalekites. And the Moanites did oppress you and ye cried to me and I delivered you out of their hand. So when these different nations of people was oppressing us, right, coming down on us, feeding us abominable foods, oppressing us through the educational system, right, oppressing us through the uh, judicial system. We cried out to the Heavenly Father and he delivered us out of their hand, man. Did Janus, did we cry out to Janus to deliver us out of the, the hand of our oppressors? No, we cried out to the heavenly father and that's who delivered us. Right. Verse 13. Yet ye have forsaken me and served other gods. Therefore, I will deliver you no more. Right. So that's what we do. We cry out to the heavenly father for help. He help us. We, you know, we rejoice in everything. And next thing you know, we done forgot about it. It's like we got amnesia, man. We some forgetful people, man. We some forget. We're a forgetful nation, man. We forget our own power after we just have been delivered. Right. Verse 13 again. Yet ye have forsaken me and served other gods. New Year's celebration. Wherefore, I will deliver you no more. Verse 14. Go cry, so like you go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulations. So the heavenly Father saying, "Hey, this year, right? Go cry unto Janus to deliver you out your tribulations. Don't don't celebrate New Year's, then try to go into church on on Peg and Sunday, and and cry out to me off off of your problems and afflictions. Let Janus save you this year." You know what I'm saying? Go let Nimrod save you. Go let Molech save you. Right? Go let the gods of America save you, man. Go cry out to them. Verse 14 again. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. Because the Heavenly Father know damn well that those gods don't really exist. They can't deliver you out of nothing. They can't hear you, right? They don't feel you. They, he understand that, but but our people don't understand. You're giving power to gods that don't exist. 
So imagine how foolish you look to the Heavenly Father by counting down three, two, one at midnight <laughs> when that ain't even when the day starts, man. The day starts at even. It would have made a little more sense if Esau had the countdown around sunset, around sundown, because that's when the new day starts. The day don't start at midnight. Right? So go call on those guys who you have chosen, man. With your choosy ass. Choosing up on these other guys, man. Right? So the rudiments of this world or the fundamental things of this world has taught us to follow after these false gods. Right? So should we keep Janus New Year, the new year of the Edomites? Should we keep their new year? Or should we keep the new year of the Heavenly Father? Which is in the month of Abib. I'm going to go with the month of Abib. Choosing the new year. Choosing to keep the new year of the Heavenly Father, man. So I can have favor in his eyes. Right? A lot of people say they know God. Christians especially. Uh, Catholics especially. Baptists especially. They claim to know God, man. But they're not keeping the laws of God. Right. Let's go to the book of Titus, the first chapter in the 16th verse. The book of Titus, the first chapter in the 16th verse, and it reads, they profess that they know. So like they profess that they know God, but in works, they deny him being abominable and disobedient. And then to every good work, reprobate. Right? So our people, they profess that they know the Heavenly Father. Right? But in works, they deny him. They not doing the works. They deny him in their works, man. And their works is keeping of the commandments. Keeping the faith. They deny him when it comes to keeping the laws of God. They deny him when it comes to keeping the faith, man. In works, they deny him. A part of the works is abstaining from evil. Right? A part of the works is not going out, clubbing, being a thought, being a whore, physically or spiritually, on New Year's Eve and counting down to so-called New Year's Day. Right? That's part of doing the works of the Heavenly Father. It's by abstaining from all that. But in works, they deny him because their works, they, they finna go turn up, man. They finna go turn up and be whores and, and whoremongers, right? So in works, they deny him being abominable and disobedient and to every good work reprobate, right? So, you know, our people profess they know the Heavenly Father. He say that them that say I know him and keep not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in them. All you all you Christians saying you know God, right? But you're not keeping his commandments. Y'all liars, man. You don't know the heavenly father. You don't understand the heavenly father because you're not doing what he say do. Right? So most of our people refuse to hearken to the heavenly father because of their families and their friends. Right. They're more concerned about how it's going to make them feel instead of being concerned about their salvation. You know what I'm saying? Let's go to the book of Acts. The fifth chapter in the 29th verse. Let's go to the book of Acts, the fifth chapter in the 29th verse. And it reads. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man right we're not to obey the preacher in the pulpit that's spewing lies on sunday saying you could eat shrimp crab and lobster god will forgive you saying that you could celebrate christmas and it's okay it's jesus birthday saying you could partake in all these wicked pagan practices right we're not to obey him right we're not to obey the educational the educational system that says that we could celebrate christmas new year's thanksgiving thanks stealing Right. Halloween. We're not to obey the educational system. Right. We're not to obey that. We're not to obey the media that says it's OK to partake in these customs. 
We are we ought to obey God rather than man. You know what I'm saying? And that's where that's where Samuel went off at, man. That's why that's what got King Salakia, not Samuel, Salakia. That's what got King Saul destroyed by obeying the people rather than the most high. See, we learn from these ancient men that oppose the will of the heavenly father. We learn from their punishments, their mistakes, and we know not to do it. Right. Let me get that in the book of first Samuel, the 15th chapter in the 24th verse. This is first Samuel, the 15th chapter in the 24th verse, and it reads, and Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. And that's what that's what got um, King Saul stripped from rulership, from his title, man. Right? Because he sinned by transgressing, by transgressing the laws of the Heavenly Father in the words of, of Samuel. You know what I'm saying? Because he feared the people and obeyed their voice. And that's what happens around this time of year with a lot of brothers and sisters with their family and friends. They they fear they fear them more than they fear the heavenly father, man. What 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 can they do to you that the heavenly father can't do to you then some? Right? Let's go to the book of Matthew the 10th chapter in the 28th verse, man, because a lot of y'all family and friends are, are going to keep you out the kingdom of heaven. And that's their job. That's their assignment. A lot of people was put on this earth to keep you away from the from the uh, from the power of the heavenly father. That's their job to keep you out the kingdom, man. You're the one that brought you into this world, your mom and dad, they, they, the ones that brought you into this world, their job is. To keep you out the kingdom of heaven. Because they're not trying to hearken to the Bible. Right? Even though they pray over their food before they eat at the at their pagan traditions. You know, they they not they not following this word to the T, man. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28, and it reads, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. So we're not supposed to fear man. Man can kill your body, but he can't kill your soul. Right. Your parents can kill your body, but they can't kill your soul. Your friends can kill your body. Right. Because friends turn on friends all the time and murder each other. Right. They could kill your body, but they can't kill your soul. But rather fear him, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Right. So you, you ought to fear the heavenly father. You ought to obey the heavenly father rather than man. You know what I'm saying? This word say, don't partake in pagan customs. Don't learn not learn not the way of the heathens. Right. Do that, man. Don't learn the ways of the heathens. Repent from it and stop doing it. Point blank, period. Repent from it and stop doing it. Don't do no more. Abstain from it. Salakia. Abstain from it. Right. Because right now you the choice is yours, man. You want to serve Satan or you want to serve the most high. Ain't no in between. You can't serve two masters, man. You cannot serve two masters. Right? That's why the Heavenly Father say, uh, why call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? Why y'all calling on God, praying over your food, praying before you go to bed, but you living in, in, in wickedness, man, gross darkness. Why you calling on him and you don't do the things he say? Right? Let's jump to Matthew 15 and verse 8. Right. The book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse eight. And it reads this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. Right. And that's speaking of all you hypocrites. All you so-called Christians, man. You know, um, I see Christians, you know, on my Instagram, they they in the church preaching, having Bible service. But then. They telling you to go follow their homie that do tattoos, man, to go get tatted up by this man that do tattoos. You honor him with your lips, but your heart is far from him because he tell us not to mark our, our, our skin. 
Don't make marks on your flesh, man. But yet you promoting tattoos on your Instagram, but you a preacher. You know, our people honor him with their lips, but their heart is far from him, man. You know, they 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 want God to be who they want him to be. Right. Our people want the heavenly father to be who they create in their mind him to be. They don't read the word to understand who he truly is, man. Our people honor him with their lips, but their heart, meaning their mind is far from him. Right. I'm going to get one more precept, man, because you got to make a choice. You got to make a choice of who you're going to serve today, man. Right. You got to make a choice of who you're going to serve today. Every day you wake up with that choice. Who you going to serve? You going to serve Satan or you going to serve the heavenly father, man. Let's go to the book of Joshua. The 24th chapter. And we'll start at the 14th verse. The book of Joshua, the 24th chapter and the 14th verse. And it reads. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord Yahweh. Right. So we are to fear the Lord because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And to serve him, meaning perform duties in sincerity and in truth, man. Right. You got to have a sincere, contrite heart when serving the Lord and in truth, man. In law, we serve him according to the law, statutes and commandments and put away the gods which your father served. The God of uh, Saturnalia, Santa Claus. Right. Sam Hain. Thanks, Stillin. Right. The uh, the God of Valentine's Day, the God of Mother's Day and Father's Day. Right. You got to put away those gods that your parents served, that your father served. That was on the other side of the flood, meaning they weren't on the ark. They was in the water, dying, drowning, getting put to death for their for their idolatry. And in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord, man, because in, in slavery, our people serve hella gods, man. The Egyptians had hundreds of thousands of gods. They was just making up gods. Right. Just the same way the Americans doing today and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Right. Because it seemed evil to people to serve the heavenly father in truth and sincerity. People look at us like we're demons, man. They look at us like we serving Satan when it when in actuality we serve in the Holy One of Israel in truth and sincerity. So he's saying in verse 15, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose ye this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods so like it, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood. Or the gods of the Amorites in whom's land ye dwell. Right? Right now we're dwelling in the land of the Edomites. Right? And, and a lot of our people, a majority of our people are serving the gods of the Edomites, man. Baal, Molech, uh, Tammuz, Nimrod. You know what I'm saying? They serving all these other gods that, that uh, didn't create the heaven and the earth. They serving all these false gods, all these idol gods that, that don't have no life in them. Right. Verse 15, it says, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Right. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And now with this, you know, you could have a discrepancy because everybody in your household ain't ready to let the world go. Right. Everybody in your household is possibly, you know, still uh, clinging to 
to the ways of this world. So when you get deeper into this passage right here, me and my house is me and my vessel, me and my temple that the heavenly father dwell in, right? You got to, you got to think about your salvation, right? You got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So everybody in your household may not be on board with this truth, man. You, you guiding them the best way possible, but it's just not the most high hasn't opened up their eyes all the way. Right. So as for me and my house, we're going to serve the most high. This household, we're going to serve the most high. We're going to keep the feast of the Lord. We're going to keep the high holy days. We're not bringing no unclean foods in this house, as well as your own vessel in your own temple. Right. Just so you don't lose your damn mind. Right. As for me and my house, mm -hmm. we're going to serve the Lord. Let not let not wickedness abide in thy tabernacle. You know. Roughly paraphrasing out of the book of Job, let not let not thy wickedness dwell in thy tabernacle. Right. Because as for me and my house, we're going to serve the most high, man. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we shall forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Right. God forbid that we should forsake the heavenly father to serve other gods. God forbid that. A brother and sister that's in this truth being pressured right now to go count down on Las Vegas Strip for the New Year's. God forbid. Right. And that'll be the, sh the Sabbath class for the day, man. I pray everybody have a to wild Sabbath, you know, repent, turn back to these law statutes and commandments in these last days, man. And um, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, you know. Our new year start in the springtime. It's not in the dead of the winter. Right? And with that, I like to say, call hala Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah, Barakata. It's HOI Las Vegas. It's HOI to the chariots fly. Shalom Yasharala.